Hey everyone, this is Matt N3 VAN. Hope you had a wonderful holiday and happy new year to everybody. Uh, today we're going to be doing a video which I've been meaning to do. A lot of friends have been asking me, and that's how to protect your emergency communications in the event of an electromagnetic pulse or a coronal mass ejection. Now, if you're a prepper like me, you know what an EMP or CME is. Basically, an EMP, for those that don't know, is a short burst of electromagnetic energy. And this can propagate through the air and does not necessarily need a wire or any particular type of conductor um, to travel or cause damage. However, with a radio, you usually, if you have it at your base station, are connected both ways. One is through the antenna, through the back port of your radio, as well as power uh, that is coming through the grid. Now there are two direct threats to your radio. First is the radiated energy that flows through the air, and this radiated energy couples very efficiently into long conductors, such as your transmission lines, cable and telephone lines, as well as amateur radio antennas. Uh, basically, the shorter the conductor, the less efficient it couples to. But many of us in the amateur radio community have long antenna wires. You know, ever for a beverage antenna, and fed half wave, the random wire, um, you name it. This will be easily transmitted through those wires and damage our radios. Now, many of our modern transceivers have very sensitive receive circuits that would easily be fried if connected to an antenna during a high altitude electromagnetic pulse or a coronal mass ejection. Now, there is another concern, and the second one is the conducted energy. If you have your radio connected to the grid power, which thankfully I do not, then your radio will receive a large pulse of conductive energy during a nuclear electromagnetic pulse or coronal mass ejection from the sun. This will give your radio, in effect, a one-two punch. Now, there are different ways to protect your radio, and I'm not going to go over it today. The main purpose of doing this video is to show you how to protect your emergency communications gear in the event that there is an electromagnetic pulse or a coronal mass ejection. Now, what you see in front of me is the uh, Faraday box that I already built. I just have to cut up the styrofoam and put the uh, items in there. And to, starting from the left, you have the Yaesu FT891. Great radio and uh, low receive current. Not, not as low as some of the other QRP ones that I have. And I know um, Julian uh, OHA uh, STN does not care too terribly much for that radio but i like it i put it coupled it with a uh, 12 volt 23 amp hour battery uh, you see i have two tuners one is the ldg uh, z100 plus as well as the mfj uh, i think that is the 939 yep 939 and that's the intelli tuner now you're wondering well, why do i have both of them here well i wasn't sure which one i was going to put inside this faraday cage and uh based on my research it looks like i'm going to be doing the ldg um 100 plus and that's mainly because as you can see on the top it's 100 milliamps and the uh, mfj is 750 milliamps so the less power needed to operate this the better so we're going to put the mfj aside and there we go now with a emp or cme the main hit that's going to happen besides the radios um, is going to be the charge controllers if you're going to be doing solar. So I'm going to be putting these in here. You don't need both. Um, I'm going to choose either between the PowerPole Mini or the Power Mini by Buddy Pole or the uh, Gennison GV10 Lithium. And it's probably going to be the Gennison. I really like this and it works fantastic. I have about two or three other ones, but this will be going inside the box as well. And as you can see, I have the 23 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and then the power film uh, solar panel 20 watt. I actually got two of them with a connecting wire and those will go in here. So if you bear with me, I'm going to measure this out and start putting them in there and I'll show you what the case looks like inside and how I built it. Okay, now that I removed all the amateur radio gear, I'm going to show you how I actually built this Faraday box. And let me show you. Remove that. There we go. So what I used was a copper foil tape, but the key here was to use one with conductive adhesive. So when it stuck to everything, as you can see, it's not the best tape job, but it gets the job done. Actually, I threw my cell phone in here and a AM FM radio, and it cuts out all the signals. Let me show you down here. Um, one thing with the Pelican cases is it has that air purge valve. So if it goes underneath water, it needs to equalize the pressure. And how I solved that was I used special copper mesh. Let me get this one out. 
I had to get this out anyway for building it. There we go. Let me see if I could show you in the light. So right there, let me see if I can get that down there. Oops, got my finger in there. <laughs> All right, so there is the copper mesh right there. And what that does is allows the purge valve to equalize pressure in case this is submerged. And that is one of the keys. Now, I'm not sure if the Harbor Freight one has the purge valve or not for equalizing pressure, but it is um, ideal. And what you want to do is make sure it goes around the lip. Let me see if I can focus in. There we go. You want it to go around the lip. So this way... The conductive edge touches this lip and sometimes you need to thicken it up with the foil but it works great and what I'll do is I'll put some links into the description um, where I got this I believe I got some of this on Amazon as well as um, Lowe's or Home Depot let me see if I have the there it is I have some left I'm gonna do with this on other projects but it is conductive adhesive with copper and the other one I have, I have a bunch of these ones. It's actually a cloth, aluminum cloth with conductive adhesive. Again, the key is to use conductive adhesive so there is no gaps um, or very little gaps to better protect your equipment. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to bore you with uh, making the case, but I'm going to make it real quick. Come back and uh, that'll be it. Hey everybody, I'm back. I got some of the foam out. This one goes down three layers. This one only goes down two. This had to go down two layers, but as you can see, there's plenty of room. So I might put a little bit of some of this foam back underneath there to pop it up. And then it's going to leave me a lot of space right here. I'm going to uh, probably move three over and open this up so I can start putting um, different things like ugh, this. I could put that. It'll fit right in there nicely and no issues with that. I could put the charge controller in there and a bunch of other things that may be of importance during a uh, coronal mass ejection or uh, that fearful nuclear weapon or high altitude electromagnetic pulse. So we'll be, might be tossing in the Geiger counter as well. So um, hope this was helpful. Uh, remember, the reason I have it separated on the edges is you don't want any of the equipment touching the metallic side so you know if you're going to do this in a garbage can or an ammo can you're like hey i'm just going to put it in an ammo can there's a few things with the ammo can make sure that it is a nice tight seal i know they have conductive seals um if you're not going to roll the um roll it underneath the seal this these uh pelican cases have a seal but i put the conductive tape uh underneath that so it actually touches the uh the ridge of the bottom and you want to do that with the uh, ammo cans or trash cans as well and then when you put your radio equipment in there make sure it's not sitting on anything metal you want to keep it separated so that's what's great thing about pelican cases or the ones from harbor freight or home depot lows um, either one that you can use i like i said pelican cases are great they're very expensive uh for what you're going to be doing but i bought this used on ebay for dirt cheap it was actually used to hold wine and i took all that nasty foam out and bought a new insert for foam and no issues at all so uh what i'm going to do is continue finishing this up if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions please put it into the comments and if you're interested in me talking about how to protect your radio that's hooked up and running all the time from an electromagnetic pulse or coronal mass ejection let me know i don't mind uh discussing that and throwing up some um uh info about that as well so you guys can get a gist of how to protect it and it, it's all based on you know protecting the line that's coming into the house if you're grid tied in my opinion it's best not to be it's best to be using the uh, lithium iron phosphate battery or even just a marine battery if you don't have the money for it as well as solar panels and a few other things so um again if you like the video give it a thumbs up shoot some comments if you have questions or want me to talk more about this i can gladly do that um and if you like the content i'm creating please uh, consider subscribing. Thank you, and have a wonderful 2023. Oh, yeah, one more thing. As you can see, I cut that void out. Uh, there's one more layer, and then this will fit nicely in there with some room to spare. But you're probably wondering what mesh I used on that purge valve, and this is what I used, the number 100 copper mesh, and uh, basically RFI EMP shielding. I bought it ages ago. Let me see if I can get it out of here. It's a lot more costly now let's see if I can use painters tape so hold it up I'm not gonna get it all out just want to show you what it looks like there we 
we go. And that's the mesh. You can see my hands through that. But this is the um, type of mesh that you would put up in walls or inside a box if you're going to build it out of wood um, to use. And I guess you can use it putting it all around the case or even make something out of fabric to protect um, items from an EMP or CME. But just want to show you guys this. I figured you'd be asking. So uh, that's pretty much it. Again, Matt N3VAN uh, signing off. Have yourself a wonderful 2023.